Well, in some parts of the Keja in Lagos, some Nigerians took to the streets in protest of widespread hardship and what they describe as anti-people policies of the Tinubu administration. The demonstration, spearheaded by civil society groups such as the Take It Back movement, a coalition for revolution and a socialist workers league, had protesters chanting solidarity songs and holding placards with inscriptions like President Tinubu, let the poor breathe. Our speakers at the protest said the ongoing economic struggles are faced by many Nigerians and improved welfare for the working class are some things uh, that citizens should speak out against. Well, Arise Director of News and Politics Editor Somna Sambo and our analyst Dr. Samamadi both join me now on News Night, this special uh, Democracy Day. I mean, it's not easy to mark 25 years of unbroken uh, democracy, considering Nigeria's, you know, past uh, before 1999. Gentlemen, both of you, thanks for uh, joining me on News Night. Uh, it, it, is it fitting to say... Um, Happy Democracy Day. I, I guess so. Let me start with you, Dr. Samamadi. Uh, 25 years of unbroken democracy. Anything to cheer about? Because some are saying democracy is in recession in Nigeria. Well, <clears throat> 25 years of civil rule, 25 years of democracy, depending on how you look at it. I think there's something to cheer. We can cheer that uh, we're not Burkina Faso. It doesn't mean that you're more prosperous. It doesn't mean that our quality of life is better. But at least we don't have soldiers, military, some of us who are part of the struggle against military rule, involved in the June 12 struggle on the streets as a law student, we understand uh, the difference. So that's, that's something to cheer. And in 2015, we celebrated, quote unquote, a milestone that we now had the first time a sitting government was removed through the ballot. So some will consider it as maybe some degree of democratic consolidation in a sense that uh, we, not, we not can have unbroken transition right. of from party, one party to another. Right. Again, uh, so those are things we can say, well, half full, but the half empty is that democracy has not translated to the certainty of freedom, whether economic, political, and maybe some will argue that the process of electing our leaders probably is not better than 1993. All right, we'll piece other. all of that together mm -hmm. uh, you know, when we come back from uh, this report, but not before I take uh, Somna's uh, take on 25 years of Nigeria's democracy so far. How far so far? Yeah, I mean, uh, we are doing well. Uh, we've uh, had uh, transitions, I mean, seven governments at the moment since 1999. Right. Elections being held, you know. We've got uh, two... Uh, uh, incumbents that actually had uh, re-election and they won, so they spent 88 years. So Basanjo, eight years. Uh, we also had Buhari, eight years. And then we've had a peaceful transfer of power from one civilian government to another. And then, of course, there was also the issue of uh, Yaradua, where a president died in office, and then there was a smooth transfer. And so, if you look at it, yeah, the health status of our democracy, it's uh, a little bit better than what some people would have anticipated for us. Uh, but there are still challenges. The absolute reason why we decided to go for democracy is to reduce the number of poor people in the country. Yeah. How come our population is growing and the number of poor people continue to grow? And when we look at it, yeah, I mean, you look at it in the 60s before independence, we had a better quality of life. In the 80s, we had a better quality of life. In the 90s, during the military, we are saying that we have bet better quality of life than now under a democracy. So democracy should not exist as a concept in the minds of people. Mm. That's only when you breathe freely, you walk yeah. freely. It must translate into the well-being of the ordinary citizen on the mm. street. Mm. And so our politicians should not be carried away by their pertinences of power, forgetting that the object is not to get into government house or right. the presidential villa, mm -hmm. but to use the instrument of state to affect people positively in terms of education. Mm -hmm. Are we better? Why does it look like our population seems to be growing, but in terms of education-wise, we are losing the indices. The right. basic indices of the country is what makes people uh, to be en uh, you know, en uh, en enticed to democracy. But when we are losing the basics in the country, you can't have afford to feed very well, mm -hmm. you can't send your kids to school, and then 
basic issues of water, sanitation, yeah. environment. I mean, in the 80s, you will see that hard to reach communities would have immunization made available to them. You will see that people will go on enlightenment campaigns. Mm -hmm. Those basic things that we used to take for granted in yeah. the 80s and the 90s, sanitation, yeah, sanitation they are no longer there. Wale -wale so we yeah. just wonder what exactly. And that's why sometimes you see people toying with this idea of military government and all of that, trying to feel good when they were in Egypt. Well, <laughs> we are in the promised land under democracy now. And the actors, the actors, the political actors must see democracy uh, as a vehicle that takes us to our desired destination, not just holding periodic elections. Yeah. And then, what exactly have we been seeing? We have been seeing people get into government and become rich. Something is wrong with our democracy. Become stupendously rich, if, yeah. you, if I might add. Dr. Samama, the, the pillars of democracy, uh, freedom, rule of law, inclusion, and what have you, on each of these scores, how have we fared this okay, 25 so years? I think I can sum it up into three pillars. Right. One is democracy's fundamental pillar is the right of people to choose leaders. And so that translates to two frameworks. One is first, enfranchisement, right to vote. And you vote you know, without coercion, environment free of, free of violence, mm -hmm. and again, those votes be counted and then accurately reported. So if you look at the electoral quality index, we are doing very badly. In 1999, which is the June we are celebrating, we had elections that were f considered f the fairest and freest. And then we started getting terrible elections under Morrissey Wu, and then under Jonathan, Jonathan, Jonathan a passable one as well. Mm -hmm. And now it has deteriorated to where in the last election we are struggling with uh, uh, the regulator of election justifying why it has to accelerate, cancel its major defense, defense, which is the electronic transmission. So I know we are talking about lawyers saying, is it mandatory or non-mandatory? Mm -hmm. That is the law. That means we are failing in the integrity of the electoral process. Now, if we take the second pillar, which is substantive freedom, a democracy means that people have basic rights to move around, to criticize government, to speak their minds. Yeah. So if you ask yourself, the media, the uh, committee for protection of journalists or other watchdogs report on continuous harassment of media houses, journalists. We see today, for example, mm -hmm. uh, those who are going to con conduct uh, protests, the police, the DSS has to come around and say, you know, kind of threaten them. So index, if you look at the global freedom index, Freedom House analysis, we're not doing very, very well at all. We're very low. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a negative. The other one is accountability. How much does leadership respond to concerns of people in terms of poverty, in terms of social concerns? So you ask yourself, look at the local government, look at the state government and the federal government. Do they really focus on responding to people's agitation? If there is yeah. insecurity, are they work, working on it? If there are roads not working, mm -hmm. or are they going to do their major pet projects? Coastal road, look at the way we did our anthem. N nobody talked about what the people right. feel. So I think okay. if you look at those indicators, we are doing badly. And Gentlemen, so that's why I have we are to not called electoral autocracy rather than democracy. That's uh, uh, absolutely. Designation. All right, let's uh, uh, quickly take you to the Democracy Day dinner where President Wolatinobu is already speaking. The President of the Senate and Chief Justice of the of Nigeria are members of the judiciary here present. Tonight is not formal for me to go on and on. But let me look at the table of my right. Professor Bolaji Akebi, Abagano Kingibe, Chief Aremo Sheikh Mosova. Be busy, I can do. Empires are here, Lure. I want to share book. It's good to see you. Looking well. The challenges of uh, Tampara. It is a great honor for me to be here. to represent the heart and soul of our democratic struggle in the country. I 
early this morning, I had a swagger. And it's on the social media. They are confused whether I was doing Puga or doing Babarega. But it is a day to celebrate democracy. Why doing the ballet for the day? I'm a traditionally Yoruba boy. I did my dobale. <laughs> Democracy is a day that is worthy of falling for. It is It is a joy to see all of you here. What is that again? <laughs> we ain't going to move an inch. We are still having a dinner. So Keep your press away. I've had excellent comment and a very touching remarks about myself and about the past. Thank you. My sincere gratitude to all of you is standing by me. I promise you, I won't fall. Nigeria is a great country. We include in our national anthem, the essence of service. I've seen many governors, both live and on Brothers TV, and sisters, a warm serving their people. The they belong to other parties, and the third and many of them are here tonight. And investment forum. I'm your Thank master, you, Governor Eno Akwaibo. Uh, we have simultaneous uh, interpretation Thank you, in Governor English, Quara. French, and Portuguese. So My comrade from Kaduna. Thank you. Sheriff. No one to arrest. Thank you very much. And Abia. Thank you. If I miss you, forgive me. Oh, Dodo, I will see you. No matter how short a man is, you will see the sky. Everybody had forgotten the partisanship color and embraced that green, white, green that depicts Nigeria, that is the value that we hold there to ourselves, that is the button, that is the reason that we say we will hand over a banner without stain to our children and grandchildren. Is it not true that Nigeria is greater than any one of us? That the unity of this country cannot be traded. Thank 
Yes. I saw many criticism about national item duty. Wherefore, if you cannot change the name Nigeria, are you the creator of Nigerian name? Nigeria is blessed. Our complexity, yes. Our diversity, on ND. What is the best road to success? And I'm standing before you, promising you. I did my broadcast in the morning, but as a price of the dinner you cost me tonight, I'm still making some remarks <laughs> to offset the dinner price, even though I describe today as low key. But I have to celebrate with you, my dear brothers. Senate President, Deputy Senate President, you get a notice from me if I've changed my mind. On minimum wages. <laughs> He's looking at me with We won't cry high. <laughs> Nothing but that, but minimum wages. We're going to do it. What Nigeria can afford, what you can afford, what I can afford. They ask you to cut your coat according to your size. If you have size at all. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a night that we should plan jovially and celebrate our God given country. I'm glad that you all are here. I'm excited. The promises I could make, struggling to bring the food prices down. But those bandits who leave the farmers alone and bring Nigeria back to its glory of production and harvesting. We can do it. We can produce our way out of the mystery of complaint. We can make Nigeria a tremendously successful country. If we gather as we gather here tonight, encourage our children about the charter of our value system. As they look upon me as a leader to make the changes, what about us, the rest of you, the rest of your children making those changes too? What do you tell them? How do you teach them? Whatever we have to invest in our national orientation, I think we should do it. Before I left for this dinner, there was a news. We commend those custom officers in Kebi rejecting millions of bribery. 
to forget the vandalization and rest of those vandalizing our track, our red track. What do you call that? Distinguished leaders, we have a lot of work that we must do about our country, about our citizens. Citizenship is not just the dictionary meaning of it, it's the actual character in us. Let's teach this one to our children so that Nigeria collectively we will do the job that we are called upon to do as one family, one nation, under God Almighty. Thank you very much. Three hearty cheers to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Yes, and with that on your mandate, we shall stand. Uh, the president is escorted to his seat, having made that, uh, you know, uh, speech from his heart, ex tempore really. Uh, some would say the president really does very well, uh, speaks from the heart uh, when he doesn't have to go to script. Uh, president Bola Tinubu has touched on quite a number of things uh, tonight at that dinner. Let me start with the, the issue of um, uh, patriotism without him exactly mentioning that word. He didn't really use that word. But he's saying patriotism really should drive uh, whatever we do as a people, whether it's a customs officer who refuses a bribe or just any ordinary Nigerian who refuses to do the wrong thing and decides in their own little space to do the right thing. Imagine what impact that would have on the nation as a whole. Gentlemen, uh, Dr. Sam Amadi and of course uh, Somna Sambo, you, you listened to the president there. Your impressions about a lot that he had to say, really. Well, for me, I think, like you pointed out, he does very well because he's a man who is into bantering. Yeah. He's a guy who has been discussing. Discourse is good. It's, 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 it's not new to him. So when he speaks as tempo, he, he comes passionate, impassioned, and engaged. So I thought that was good. I, I think that he was, really going, he was up to something when he talked about Nigeria is greater than us, mm -hmm. greater than everybody. And that could be the key point of his speech. Maybe if he had stretched it a little bit more, dwelt on it, and make it more evocative to say, look, this means that in spite of our political differences, mm -hmm. we just need to correct that the key thing is national unity. And I think that could have been the keynote. Uh, somehow, of course, he went into other issues. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, he talked about moral, some sort of moral orientation. But he, again, he just flashed through it, didn't deep in it. Uh, but look, but at a dinner like it's this, a dinner. I mean, you don't have to. I mean, you, yeah. but, but the key point is that <laughs> you also <laughs> been a dinner, short speech. You have to now prioritize the keynote you drive, <laughs> and few minutes hit it down. Again, I mean, this is. I like the fact that he started with a joke and and yeah. and commonalize what happened, which is <laughs> which now takes off the bite from it and makes it easier for people to deal with. I mean, things happen. Let me uh, quote what he said. Yeah. You know, earlier this morning, I had a swagger. Swagger. And yes. Dobale. And, and, uh, and <laughs> I so dobale for the... Yeah. Really Light-hearted, really? makes it human. Mm -hmm. And that's how presidents, everybody, speech, right? I mean, earlier today, they were fighting. There was so much smoky going on, which is necessary. The president stumbled, which has happened to everybody. But again, he has now made it very ordinary yes. with a wit, with because it is human. We speech. all do. So, yeah. I think it was a great speech, yeah. a good speech. Uh, but mm. the, the the real problem with patriotism in Nigeria is alignment with action. I mean, credibility of speeches also go with actions taken prior and mm. after. So yes, great speech. But again, back to what has the government done and what will it do? to walk this talk. He more or less, you know, sees the opportunity there to address governors and say, uh, some of you have done well and actually named some of them. Of course, they were at the dinner there. Uh, mentioning the governors, 
and saying, I have seen what you have done with your people. What, what do you make of that? Sumna? Oh, 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 all right. I thought you were still with uh, no. Dr. All right. I mean, uh, uh, personally, because I... Because really, that's where governance yeah, yeah, matters I mean, the most. Yeah, that's where governance is. But let me start uh, this way by saying that I feel highly elated as a citizen of Nigeria that the president is looking stronger. Right. Because what happened this morning, mm. we haven't really had so much of that happening before. And uh, it could have meant something else. Yeah. And so seeing the president standing and then saying that he was busy doing buga, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> very lighthearted and way. Yeah, yes. doing dobale. Well, a very good uh, statement there, encouraging the governors to actually concentrate on good governance, mm -hmm. which is one of the key pillars of democracy. Yeah. And uh, we must understand that democracy is one of the great vehicles we can use to actually achieve what the president started with by saying that Nigeria is a great country, a very yeah. beautiful country. Absolutely. Uh, the political actors sometimes do not understand this country. And I, I, I uh, tend to feel that they've not gone around this country to see the beauty uh, and then the power between the Nigeria, behind the Nigerianness of us as a country. The land is there. Everything. Full of everything, mm. but it's the key actors that do not understand what it means to take this country uh, to the greatest level of development for the human race, for us to contribute our levels of, the, uh, of development to the human race. Mm. And so, as such, I feel highly elated that the president had to touch on that key aspect of national orientation. Absolutely. National orientation, to me, it's no longer about citizens. It is about those who are governing us, the political yeah. actors. They need to understand what n the average Nigerians are looking for. Mm -hmm. Provide basic services. Make sure that the accountability that is expected of them is made available. Because a lot of things are shrouded in secrecy in mm. this country. People govern us in secrecy. We don't know so much. And then at the pillar of democracy's accountability. Yeah. So we can't be celebrating democracy without Democrats. Absolutely. We need our political actors to be Democrats. Going to the streets, getting to know what exactly the problems are, and then reducing the poor indices yeah. that we have for the country. Uh, uh, Which we had to enough time. Sanitation and yes, all of that. Yes, indeed. There's so much. And, and, so, and much so we need to embark on reforms. That's just yeah. where I want to close. President Tinubu should use the second year of his governance and third year to engage in reforms, reforms, reforms. Mm -hmm. Governance reforms, agricultural reforms, institutional reforms, and all of that. All that they promised. If we don't engage in reforms from now till mm -hmm. next year, I'm afraid the president's first time would have been swallowed in politics. So... It's not mm. enough to say it. We yeah, want to see the president investment. actually said reforms are needed to birth yes, a Yes, including a national orientation. Let's right. see it starting from him, reducing your convoy, reducing the... Absolutely. You saw former President Gulag Jonathan say that political actors, their sons and daughters are spreading dollars in this huge yeah. uh, uh, issue is that we found ourselves. Mm. Issues of national Insensitive austerity. to the state of the economy. Yeah, national the, the austerity. Yet yeah, the children of politicians are spending dollars and not even spending it, but putting it right out there in our faces. Yeah, faces. That they are yeah. living big and living in bigger houses and better houses. Having about 21 billion era for a vice president's residence. When people mm. in Kara and Amoda can't eat, people in Enugu are finding it difficult to feed. People in Akwaibom, people in... I mean, talk yeah. about the country, mm -hmm. generally. Yeah. So... If we Dr. don't Sam see Amadi. it as an abuse to us yeah. that our people are feeding from the dustbin, like... Hmm. Uh, uh, like it happened uh, in Venezuela? Yeah, like the little Umaru uh, uh, Diko was a mini former minister of transportation, then something is wrong with us as a nation. Absolutely, a nation that is so rich yet so poor. Dr. Sam Amadi, um, GEJ, good luck, Ebele Jonathan, made a statement at the Democracy Day lecture yesterday where he said this winner-takes-all kind of politics that we play is inimical to unity and progress of Nigeria. I'd like well, to get yeah, your take on that. I think the president has somewhat grown as a presidency. And I mean, they, they say that presidents get famous after mm -hmm. those who be who have consequence so i think it's one of those presidents because he has been saying the right things doing the right things you see the winner takes all two stro two aspects for it. one is the presidential system and the parliamentary mm -hmm. you know there's perhaps need for us to think around how do we, without disruption reshape the incentive structure uh, and the give and take so you don't just win and win everything i mean mm -hmm. principal got that three percent 
even without a formal legal instrument, he could have broadened his government to reflect that he had a narrow, restricted mandate. 33 is failure, basically, mm -hmm. if not other parties couldn't come together. That should have been a stable moment to say we need a broader based governance. Mm -hmm. Second is that, like Abacha talked about, and what's trading now about multiple pres vice presidency, yeah. those are stru structural ways of creating shared power. And political scientists tell that shared power has been one of the ways to stabilize countries like us, multi-ethnic, diversity, complexity. Mm -hmm. So sharing power in multiple ways would help. Again, the mentality, apart from the legal instruments, the, the idea of, of politics as a conquest, you know, mm -hmm. we have to get this power. Yeah. Now we have got it. Mm -hmm. We have to terrorize those. He actually says it's one others. of the reasons why you exactly. have to do or die. Exactly. You because know, people, to and also power is monetized. I mean, right. If you run, like you say, if you run a city that is clean, mm. where accountability follows, then there's not much to gain because, I mean, in your four years in power as a governor, as a president, you actually drop in your financial what? You, you have time to do business, mm -hmm. but if you can use a small screen of executive power, mm -hmm. and I walk contrast to yourself, to institutions where your son probably is a shareholder, and mm -hmm. because the law does not say it's criminal, yeah. you don't see the conflict of interest, then this becomes winner takes all, because you literally move from poverty to get what by virtue of being elected a yeah. House of Reps senator. So mm -hmm. I think the notion here is that in two ways, structural reform, but beyond that, we need to also, like I said, the the problem with moral preaching by those in power is that people are not listening. The cynicism of what they are doing, the, the, the contra messaging. In fact, right. a, a philosopher the says, disparity your between actions what are speaking so loud, but I can't hear what they're saying. Right. Their right. actions speak so loud that people are not hear hearing them. So right. they need to really start with themselves. And so oftentimes we see this as tokenism. Yes, okay, mm. there's a dinner, the parent makes a speech. Even the parent himself may not even believe what he's saying. Mm. But if the parent is alignment between word and action. And then following morning, like someone says, executive order goes around to say, shut down this, yeah. resize this. Then people will say, we are in it. When, when, when body came with body language, people were waited to watch whether it was real. Mm. But when they saw that it wasn't real, <laughs> they went okay, back Okay, so to, yeah. very quickly, let's, uh, let's yeah. um, I mean, it's Democracy Day. Let's mm. uh, do an assessment of our, uh, you know, democratic journey in the last 25 years. Uh, there are some that one might want to describe as um, accidental heroes of our democracy. Of course, we heard the president, you know, list out some names. Mm -hmm. He couldn't have, I mean, that was not an exhaustive list, yeah. but he did recognize the, you know, contributions of, of some people, including, of course, the man himself, MKO uh, Biola. I mean, let's talk about some accidental heroes, uh, people who really have not uh, lived up to, uh, you know, the billing in terms of their That's democratic special. credentials so far. Somna? Yeah, I mean, a lot without of, necessarily naming names. Yeah, yeah, without <laughs> oh, naming names. Uh, right. Or oh, can we yeah. have a you know a, yeah. a democratic or democracy hall of fame? Yeah, I mean, really? we we should we should actually. Uh, that's why I started by saying that you can't have democracy without Democrats. Uh, we've got some Democrats within this uh, Fourth Republic, people who have actually stood for the system. Uh, you would have seen, uh, for example, what Kenny Namani did. And then you had what uh, Amenu Masari did when the third term issue was laced before them. Right. I mean, that could have actually derailed our democracy. Mm -hmm. We could have gone ahead to have a third term and put a despotic mm -hmm. leader. Mm -hmm. And then, before you know it, the military will use that as an excuse Be to like actually Kimberley. flush yeah. everybody out mm -hmm. of the system. But you could see how they were able to manage that. In, in fact, lawmakers within that set, you know, are people who actually stood up and did very well. While some of them actually went into the hall of infamy. I mean, well, I've seen people like uh, the late Brian Manto, I don't want to say it here, but he actually opened his mouth and said it clearly that, look, this is what happens, uh, and the elections are rigged and all of that. Mm. And to his, uh, uh, to his, yeah, yeah, I mean, to his credit, he actually mentioned all of this before he died. And so he repented of some of these things. Now, if you take a look at what we have been doing with some governors, governors, for example, going to uh, cut off roads 
because they don't want their political opponents to mm. win election, like mm. it happened in uh, mm. Kogi State. Right. I mean, that's the highest level of impunity that you would have in a, in a democratic system, like it happened with Yaya Bello and uh, Natasha mm. Akboti. I yeah. mean, you, how could that be happening in a democracy that people are supposed to come out and exercise their voting franchise? I felt that was the highest level of abuse on the people who elected you. Mm. So now you would have discovered that it's a temporary occupant. So yeah. you have instances that power also. is the most transient. Yes, and that then thing. under Obasanjo, for example, yeah. where you have like about four or five members of a House of Assembly who wake up out of maybe 20 or uh, 30 member uh, House of Assembly mm. and impeach a serving yes. governor. Yeah. You could also see instances where there were abuses of state of emergency. A mm. president would just wake up and declare a state of emergency and remove a validly elected governor so like those you. Were that, that those were that in, yeah, in that our spot. democracy. So, but the good aspect of it is that we are beginning to see change. Actually, mm. uh, irrespective of how you may not like President, uh, former President Buhari in certain things, mm. there are some efforts that he made to actually transform himself into a democratic leader. When certain things were brought before him, you will see that he took his time to actually follow some of the uh, rule of law, even when many critics did not give him time. Mm. And that's where we're asking that President Tinubu should follow that path, because we are beginning to see some things that make us to actually question his own democratic credentials. When we see the police and the journalist relations under someone who was a pro-democracy activist, mm -hmm. we are beginning to raise alarm too. So the government should embark on institutional reforms right. to reform the police, reform the judiciary. How many people have faith in the judiciary? Some of our institutions are beginning to fail us, and they're not only failing us as a people, it makes us look bad before the international community. Dr. Samamade, before we, we wrap this, opposition failure a threat to Nigeria's democracy. That's uh, former Vice President Atiku saying there. And mm -hmm. the point he raised about Akoti and uh, Yaya Bello's situation mm -hmm. in uh, Kogi State you know, comes to mind. Opposition. Well, opposition mm -hmm. removed a sitting president. Mm -hmm. Good luck, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. He willfully congratulated the winner mm -hmm. of that, mm -hmm. that's a bright light in our democratic Absolutely. journey. In fact, perhaps it's brightest, yes? Right. From right now. now yes. You see, the point is this. It happened under Jonathan, at least I was in that government, because Jonathan had a certain temperament and profile. Jonathan, the one, was clear-minded that he wasn't going to push too much to put himself in power. He, don't forget that there were those who were in that government who wanted a more pushful action. Mm -hmm. There was issue around even changing the date of election. It was difficult for yeah. Jonathan to push that. <laughs> mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. gave uh, Jega all the powers. In fact, Jonathan himself put Jega in because he asked the question, can, who is the person who I can appoint that I cannot control? control. And they gave him Jega. Now, after Jonathan, Buhari appointed somebody, from, Jonathan appointed from the north, which balances that incentive mm -hmm. structure. Yeah. Buhari appointed from his own place. So the question is, Jonathan made it possible. But again, back to the issue. The opposition need to be stronger under then. The, op the opposition weaponized. The civil society was part of what helped mm. them win. Yeah. They demonized Jonathan. The post of identity, where he came from, the German who was drunk out all yeah, the time. Yeah, I mean, it was very... It was, <laughs> was weaponized. <laughs> we listen to Kyle de Fire me saying Say that so. some of those things that they said Labor. against Jonathan were actually pure politics. Labor, yeah. and, Civil society. I confronted them and they became paid up members of APC. So it's difficult. But let's not forget one to talk about heroes as dental. Mm -hmm. Forgotten heroes. Forgotten Hopefully heroes. Hopefully, once mm -hmm. I was actor on the streets on June 12, I know what happened. Mm. Someone like Joe Hopefully, also had a opportunity to compromise the election. Okay. Stood up, but today, Humphrey is forgotten. Yeah. Humphrey, in my view, apart from Viola himself, who was even a reluctant hero? Okay. Gentlemen, we have There's to an attempt care. to actually make Abiola the hero look a little lower than what he's supposed to be. Minimizing his role, right? Minimizing his role right. in this in election. The, yeah, in, 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 in the, under in this administration. I think President Bola Tinubu's government should be careful. Yeah. Because if you heard what Kashim Shatima, the vice president, was saying yesterday. He said it was an unsung hero. Yeah, I mean, Tinubu is it, an unsung Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, there's also that he orchestration was, making it look like, you know, Kashim Shatima. Hopefully, was. Gentlemen, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we must make sure that, yeah, President Tinubu tried under the pro democracy. Thank you very much. But we should be very careful not to minimize the role that MKO played and then ensure that the government manages now, that situation we have to very well. It. Thank you very much. Thank MKO you. Moshut Kashimawo Olawale Abiola remains the center of Nigeria's democracy.